Hi, I'm Dr. Kalika, and today I want to talk about clicks and clunks in your hips. So, some of you probably noticed that when they move, they have some uh, strange sounds in their hip. Sometimes it's a dip clunk, sometimes it's a superficial snap, sometimes it's a click, and um, sometimes they are concerning and sometimes they are not. So, today I wanted to discuss all the reasons and causes of these clicks and clunks uh, of what we call musical hips. So if you are, if you have a musical hip, perhaps it will be interesting for you. So um, in the, in the hip joint, uh, we have two different types of sounds. One sound comes from the joint itself. So if you look at the hip joint, it's a very deep structure. This is called acetabulum, and the hip head of the femur comes in here. And so this is the deepest joint in the human body, and it has a very unique um, uh, sealant mechanism around, which we're going to talk about. So when the problem comes from the joint, we call it articular or intraarticular, and uh, that's intraarticular cause. Um, when the sound comes from other areas, like your, um, like the side of your hip. Your, what we call trochanter, which you may call my hip bone, or if it comes from the back of the hip, the hamstrings, or even the front here, where your deep flexors are, where the psoas is, we call these sounds intraarticular. Now, there's no differentiation of extraarticular or intraarticular being more or less dangerous, or vice versa. It depends on the cause. So we will start with uh, we, we will start talking about the intraarticular. Uh, so the uh, meaning is intraarticular. When I refer to intraarticular, it means inside the joint. So the, the hip joint is really unique. It has this deep surface, and it's really nicely fitted uh, head of the femur. And there's a uh, if you perhaps heard a labrum. It's a fiber cartilage tissue that seals the joint, and then all of that is encapsulated. So there's a joint capsule with very interesting ligamentous system inside. So uh, this whole anatomy uh, together creates a very unique situation not present anywhere else, which um, creates a negative pressure inside the, the joint. That negative pressure is another important stabilization mechanism for the hip. Um, so there's multiple uh, points of support, muscular, ligamentous, capsule, and the negative labrum and the negative pressure itself is another mechanism. So when you hear a deep clunk, that clunk is probably coming from the joint. If you hear this clunk rarely, this is because the forces of inside the capsule and the joint and the ligaments are not matching the forces you're producing with the outside, with the muscles. And that usually happens when the people abduct and externally rotate their hip. If you hear that sound rarely, I would say it's not very concern concerning. But if you hear this sound very often, it's concerning. The reason being is that you may have a labrum that's being uh, degenerative or torn, or even on the way to be torn, and that means that this hip is unstable. And uh, the causes of that, uh, of what causes that unstable labrum, has to be ruled out. And usually for the internal problems, for the articular, for the joint problem, you really need an MRI. So again, deep sounds, very uh, very infrequent, not so alarming. When you get them very frequent, happening on a regular basis, alarming. Go see your doctor, get an MRI, get it examined, uh, think about it. Now, we, we're going to move to extra articular causes. Uh, and the extra articular meaning that they're not inside the joint. However, we will stop, start closer to the joint. So there is another sound that happens in front of your hip, which is extra articular, but still very close to the joint. And that sound is produced by your psoas and iliacus tendons. So there is a, a thing that, um, in medicine we call it co coxa saltans. So it means that uh, your hip is, um, the tendon of the hip is subluxing. And in the past, it was thought that the, the psoas tendon is, is riding and snapping over this eminence. Uh, it, we call it iliac eminence. But 
in the near, very uh, recently, it was proven that that actually doesn't happen. And what happens is an incoordination between two head, heads of your iliacus muscle, and the psoas tendon lies inside of those iliacus head, and that produces a snap where the um, contraction of the psoas is not in sync with, with the iliacus. And uh, we're going to demonstrate that on the ultrasound later. Now, the next uh, snapping sensation is very frequent. Happens over your greater trochanter, over your hip bone, which you, which you may call hip bone. And the iliotibial bend may slide in and out over the greater trochanter. And it may not produce the symptoms, but eventually it probably will, because the gluteus medius tendon is located right underneath, and it will grind it. So I think this is an important snap to be addressed, to take a look at, to see, to look at ultrasound. You don't need an MRI. Ultrasound is perfect, actually. MRI cannot see movement. Uh, so ultrasound is perfect for this cause, and we can prevent uh, hip degeneration of gluteal tendons. Um, in itself, the IT dent also can degenerate, so uh, this is an important snapping sound. Uh, and this usually is caused by um, proper, improper stability and inadequate stabilization of lateral luteal muscles and the pelvis. So this is something we can see with ultrasound, we can examine on diagnostic sonography. Yes, this is alarming. See your doctor. The next snapping sensation is, is not so common, but happens occasionally. It's over your hamstring, and the hamstring tendon inserts to your sit bones. This is on the back of your hip. And it can also snap here. Very rare. I may see one a year. Uh, but if you feel that they're snapping when you squat on the way back, when you squat in deep, um, uh, yeah, it's alarming. It might not be painful in the beginning, but I think it's alarming because you'll get hamstring tendinopathy and the muscles of the posterior hip needs to be looked at, at what their coordination is um, and stuff like that. Now, uh, going back to the joint, I talked a little bit about the labrum uh, being interarticular, but there is an extraarticular cause to the interarticular to the intraarticular labrum pathology. So I'm going to return back to the psoas, to the psoas which is snapping here, because it's known that the psoas tendon, when it's snapping, can destroy the labrum. So these clicks, even though they are extraarticular, they're on top of the, the joint capsule the labrum and can destroy, so they also could be, should be looked at. Um, so these are pretty much your most common clicks. Uh, so again, if the clunk is rare and the clicking is rare, I think it's not alarm. If something gets uh, clicking and you feel some discomfort and you feel that it's becoming too frequent, and you have other symptoms of discomfort, I think you should see a doctor. So right now I'm going to demonstrate all these area and we're going to try to put a video of all these clicks and clunks. Thank you. Go. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. No, no, fine. So altogether, these uh, musical hips, the snaps, clicks, and clunks could be innocent or could be dangerous. And I think the best way is to really see someone who is either a hip specialist or a physical therapist who does diagnostic ultrasonography. If it happens too frequently or associated with other discomfort, I think it's best to check it out to prevent the problem before it progresses. Thank you very much.